Hello YouTube, this is Frodo. Today I'll show you a new type of fortress farm. It produces wither skulls, coal, bones from the wither skeletons, but also a healthy amount of blaze rods and a bit of gold. I designed this farm with my friend Birchu on the Hemisphere Survival Server. The mobs are brought in using minecarts and on two platforms here and the player stands there, hits them with a sweeping edge sword. The principle for the spawning platforms is that I use three wide platforms and a slime pusher in the middle, which of course is another variation of an old El Mango sugarcane farm. Mobs will spawn here and be pushed down, where they fall down or sink down in the case of blazes. And then they are pushed a second time and picked up by minecarts, which removes them from the mob cap. And we have four minecart lines moving the mobs to the player. Then we use minecart eaters going down under the platform into a storage system. All of the drops go into the sorting system here and go into shulker box loaders or are crafted up coal to coal blocks, bones to bone blocks. The whole thing is built on a soul sand valley. So you don't need to spawn proof a lot, but of course all of the fortress blocks must be unspawnable and we'll have to deal with Ziglin reinforcement, we'll get to that later. It's a quite fast farm. We have roughly 30,000 bones, 23,000 coal, 15,000 blaze rods, 650 wither skeleton skulls, certainly enough for a few beacons, and a bit of gold that comes out to roughly 200 gold blocks per hour. Or if you want to count the useless drops like the golden swords and the rotten flesh, we are talking about 90,000 drops per hour. Or if we translate this into the compressed forms, the bones turn into 10k bone blocks per hour, that's over 5 shakers, and we get 2600 coal blocks per hour. And it's one dimensional, so it doesn't require any portals, and that means you can run it on a server, even if other players are in the overworld, without having a second account. But I doubt that it will work on spigot or paper servers, as these break pretty much all redstone that is timing dependent. And these minecarts are actually very timing dependent. The inspiration of this farm is of course Stromner's Whiskey Train. One of the best wither skeleton farms out there. But I thought it would be nice to have a variant of the farm that also allows the collection of blaze rods with a bit of gold on the side. Which of course will lower the rates of the wither skeleton drops as a good part of the mob cap goes towards blazes and ziglins. Now this farm isn't very well optimized. In particular, I have two outer lines that are much shorter than the inner lines, so the mobs are not distributed evenly over the lines. So I figure we could push the rates a bit higher, but 700 or whatever wither skelly skulls per hour is nothing to sneeze at, and the farm will provide enough fuel for a decently large smelter. If push comes to shove, you can always turn the bone meal into dried kelp blocks as well. I did a simple setup for that a while ago. On the spawning side, you have the inner fortress structures, marked in red here. And there you have the option to use wither roses on dirt, which means that only wither skeletons can spawn here. Or if you are not inside the inner bounding boxes, you need to use nether bricks, and then you will get all types of spawns. So this way you can kind of create a mix. The more regions you have with wither roses, the more wither skeleton drops you will get. The more nether bricks you have, the more blazes and gold you will get. Now this farm isn't terribly hard to build, but it's a bit effort to clear the spawning spaces and spawn proof all of the fortress structures of course. So if you find a lava lake that's a plus. Speaking of lag, the whole server is running on less than 30 MSPT. So this farm takes maybe 15 to 20 MSPT, which isn't too bad but you should obviously run it on a server if there are a few people on. So let's jump into a world download with our trusty carpet bot Steve standing at the AFK spot and walk you through the farm. So you need to know that this is kind of a better version. There are a lot of little things I'd do differently if I wanted to build a farm again, but it works just fine for now. I'm very happy with that version. But for example, the reason why the storage is so far away is that this farm went through several redesigns 
and I actually rebuilt the whole kill chamber twice, but I wasn't in the mood to rebuild the storage. So I just made a little minecart line for the hopper minecarts to go up here. So this lever here controls the minecarts that are sent out. So right now we are sending out no more minecarts. And it also controls the yeeters. The kill chamber is what I would expect to be very similar to Stromness Whiskey Train and similar farms. I have four minecart lines sending out minecarts at hopper speed. And they will return here, sending the mobs to the two kill spots, both in range of the armor stand that the player hits here. So the mobs will be unloaded here and here. And we have hopper minecarts going below. And they are sent up into a nether card heater by Inspector Talon, which is a very nice heater because you don't have to move rails or something. The minecarts will just clip into the soul fire here and the items will just drop out into the cobweb, which kills all of the momentum. And then they will be aligned against this honey wall here and pushed over a usual nether sorter. We just put the blaze rods into a shulker box loader and just like all shulker box loaders I've built recently is designed by Glotz. Coal, of course, is auto crafted to coal blocks. Bones are first crafted to bone meal and then to bone blocks. Gold is crafted to ingots and we have one filter for the ingots and then crafted to nuggets. And then, of course, we have the wither skelly skulls. And in the end, we just have shulker boxes of wither skeleton skulls and gold and bone blocks and coal blocks and of course a ton of blaze rods and I've already pulled a lot of shulker boxes from this farm here. Now we need two heater lines to keep up with the number of drops. I started out with just one heater but it couldn't keep up so the items would back up here at the kill spot. And we do have a strider pen with about 40 striders near the AFK spot. This will block the spawning of all hostile mobs around the player because it creates a spawning potential. And I'll just link a video from Gnembon explaining this because he does it so much better than I ever could. But the bottom line is, if you have enough striders near the player in the Sultan Valley, then no more hostile mobs will spawn except in fortresses and bastions. That means, of course, we need to spawn proof over all of the fortress blocks, which is easily done if you have a mob switch. I'll link a video to a very simple warden mob switch that I used here. And we also need to spawn proof a cube extending about 50 blocks in each direction about the player to block Ziglin reinforcements. We'll get to that. All right, so we have four separate minecart lines and they are kind of closed. That means the leftmost line on this side is also the leftmost line here. And the reason for that is that you have to be very careful in spawn proofing to not get any Ziglin reinforcements here. So basically, if you miss any spot and maybe you get a blaze or you get a wither skeleton and something collides with one minecart, and this is what will happen if you miss a spawning spot and a single ziglin walks into the minecart area and stops them. So essentially, one minecart line will be not functional anymore and you have to break all these minecarts, kill all these mobs. Basically, the only way is to stop the farm Turn on the mob switch so that no new mobs spawn and then start cleaning up. Now I can't be sure if I eliminated all of these possibilities in the world download, but in the current version I ran the farm for over 50 hours and didn't encounter one of these problems. Maybe I just got lucky or maybe I finally tracked down all of the spaces where reinforcements could spawn, who knows. Obviously it's very hard to figure out where the Ziglin came from. You can't really record and watch 10 hours of footage to see where a Ziglin spawns where it shouldn't. So my recommendation would be to mark out the area. Now the area where reinforcements can spawn is from the point where the zombie is attacked 40 blocks in each direction and there are different zones and again there's a great video by Gnemon describing these zones. There's also a script by Gnemon that doesn't seem to work in 121 unfortunately that could show these zones graphically. Maybe it's fixed by the time you see this video. So it's not quite 50 blocks. What you can do is to use a mod like Mini Hut to create a box that contains all the places where reinforcements can spawn. So here I just took 45 blocks in each direction from the AFK spot. 
And then for all, the, all of these spots, either you have to spawn proof them, or you have to make sure that the Ziglins or the zombies can't pathfind to the player and can't get close enough to be in a cannot despawn sphere. So basically it would be bad if a reinforcement would spawn here and walk here and stand here and this would be too close for despawning and it would clutter up the mob cap. Of course it would be even worse if the zombie would somehow have a way here into this area could go on the rails and stop the minecarts. So this is also why I encased these minecart lines in glass here. You see when I built this farm I made a pretty bad mistake. I assumed it would be sufficient to spawn proof. Look at that, there's a zombie here. I assumed it would be sufficient to spawn proof against regular mobs. But what I didn't consider is that zombified piglins, which are killed here, will also be have the reinforcement mechanic, the same that we use for copper farms and zombies and drowned. Once we attack these ziglins in the kill chamber, they will spawn reinforcements. And unfortunately, zombified piglins or ziglins can spawn even if we use buttons to spawn proof this. This is because they don't spawn in the middle of the block, they spawn between the blocks. So what I actually have to do here to make this safer would be to either spam light levels. So if we have a light level of 12 everywhere, then nothing can spawn. Or replace these buttons with pressure plates, which are larger and block basically the complete block. So this is one thing that you can avoid if you build a farm. So now the farm is reasonably safe. If something spawns up here, they won't find a path to the player. But it can still happen in this design once every few hours that a minecart line breaks. And again, you can avoid this if you spawn proof everything. All right, let's have a look at the rest of the farm. So for spawning, I use these slime pushers, which I use quite a lot. They are very simple. So we have either nether bricks, which means if we are in the bounding box of a fortress, which is the yellow area here, all fortress mobs can spawn on nether bricks. But of course we'll use these fence gate in the middle to block magma cube spawnings because we don't want magma cubes in here. So we'll get blazes, we'll get ziglins and we'll get wither skeletons and the slime pushers will push them to the side. They will sink down. They will be pushed again here into the middle. They will sink down again and then they will be picked up by minecarts and minecarts remove them from the mob cap. But why would I use this type of pushers at all? Now the limit of traditional fortress farms, and this is Gnemon's design by the way, the old one from 113 or whenever, is that flying machines have to push mobs off the platform and either these platforms have to be fairly small or it really takes a long time to clear the flying machines. And since the mobs are not eliminated from the mob cap, there's kind of a natural limit to these types of farms. The player has to be 24 blocks away, otherwise nothing can spawn. So the rates are limited to something like 40,000 drops per hour. And in my opinion, the only way to improve on that is to eliminate the mobs faster from the mob caps. And this means smaller spawning platforms and pick up the mobs in minecarts. So even though blazes sink down slowly, the other mobs will fall down quickly and be fairly quick to end up here in the minecart area. And still, in very rare cases, it can be that a mob will be just caught right between the lines and just stand here. Uh, at this point, the mob will despawn after 30 seconds, but this is the exception. So usually all of the mobs that fall down are pretty much immediately picked up by the minecarts. We eliminate the mobs very quickly from the mob cap, and this means we get higher rates. Now also, if you are in the inner structure, of the fortress, so this was where all these walkways were. Then you can use any block to spawn fortress mobs and we can use dirt and plant wither roses and this means only wither skeletons can spawn here. If we are outside the inner structures, then we have to use nether bricks. You can build all of the spawning platforms out of nether bricks. In this case, you will have less drops from the wither skeletons, you will have more blazes and more ziglins. Personally, I value the wither skeleton drops basically for the coal and for the bones. So I tried to use as many regions as possible 
where only wither skeletons can spawn, but of course there are still plenty where we'll get blaze rods. If you want only wither skeletons you could just build Stromless Whiskey Train, then you wouldn't need this more complicated pickup system here. Right, and controlling these slime pushers is just a clock here. So basically we have this hopper line and each time we depower the redstone line an item in here can move one block further. And this will activate the pushers on one side and the redstone torch to move up the signal. And these slime pushers are controlled by a clock here that is just slow enough so that the pushers will push until the middle. And then we have another clock on the other side because with these slime pushers the more you have in a chain the slower the clock has to be. I will link a Mungo's video where he describes them and he also describes the timings. But bottom line, because we have clocks on both sides, we can run the slime pushers a lot faster. And here at the bottom we have a faster clock controlling the inner pushers. We have pistons and a redstone block that is moving back and forth. This piston controls the next pistons. So that's very simple. And that's the whole of the farm. Now we did break bedrock to increase the rates of the farm. You don't have to do this. I think the whole farm would take maybe 12 to 15 hours to build if I would have to build it again. And about five hours of that was to create this hole in, in the bedrock using Desu Desu's bedrock breaking machine. If you don't break bedrock, you will need larger spawning platforms because bedrock breaking about doubles the rates of the spawns here in this area. So you could just use longer minecart lines, more spawning areas and not break bedrock. But then you would have to dig out the area, which is also nasty. So we thought it easier to break bedrock than have a TNT duper create this hole here. And then we had room to build a farm. Now you have two on off buttons. One of on off buttons here is for the slime pushers. The top slime pushers are absolutely unload safe. You can leave them running. But the bottom ones are not, so unfortunately the bottom ones could break if you unload the area. So just turn off the farm before you leave. And we have a second lever in this case, activating the minecart lines here and the minecart lines for the collection system. Now there were a number of problems I had to solve when designing this. And the first one was the easiest. You see. The player hits blazes and other blazes will aggro on the player if the player hits blazes. So here we have a box 48 blocks in each direction where the blazes will become aggro. So that means if a blaze spawns here, the blaze will immediately aggro on the player like that one and it will try to get to the same Y level as the player. Now if the spawning platform is higher, then the blazes would just travel up and hover here and fill up the mob cap. So you have two ways around this. One way, and this is what I chose, I built the kill chamber low, lower than the lowest spawning platform, so the blazes will fall down on their own. The other option, of course, would be to build this kill chamber a bit further away from the spawning platforms, so that you have 48 blocks in one direction between the kill chamber and the spawning platforms. The layout that I chose is that from the point of the armor stand where the player stands to the nearest spawning platform we have slightly over 32 blocks. You see that very rarely mobs get stuck in the middle here and are not picked up by minecart and I want that all mobs are far enough away so that they can despawn eventually. And mobs will never despawn if they are closer than 32 blocks to the player. So. 32 blocks is the correct distance in my opinion. But that's still a lot closer than 48 blocks, especially because it's 48 blocks in each direction. Unlike the despawn sphere, which is a true sphere, this aggro range is a rectangle and therefore a lot larger. The next problem are the Ziglin's reinforcements that I already talked about. So you need roughly a box, 50 blocks in each direction and spawn proof everything there. This is also one of the advantages of building the kill spot out in the lava sea. There are very few blocks you need to spawn proof here. Basically, they are all up there. But these Siglin's reinforcements is also why I built these little trapdoors to make the player secure. 
and you could even open these trapdoors here and the Zicklins would fall down into lava if they tried to get to the player. But so far the Zicklins couldn't pathfind here. But you never know, you might have missed something. Sometimes these Zicklins will even walk over the rails, even though they shouldn't, but sometimes they do. So this is just a basic security measure. You can also try to kind of block off regions like so. So these walls are all two blocks high, so the Zicklins can't get over this. So there's no way, even if I had missed spawn proofing something down here, they couldn't get up to, into the minecart lines. So that's also pretty safe here. But for example here I missed a zombie, I have no idea where these zombies are coming from. Maybe they spawning here. Again, for me the next step will be to replace all of these buttons that I used with pressure plates so that areas like these are safe. Okay. Now another problem was mobs glitching into blocks. These mobs are pushed by the slime pushers against walls. And my original design had the minecarts just below these glass walls. But sometimes the slime pushers would push mobs into the walls. So they were partially glitched into the walls and they would collide with the minecarts. So this is one of the two reasons why I have the second set of pushers. So these pushers will just push the mobs in the middle and somehow the alignment works a lot better. So in this case, you can't have mobs colliding with minecarts if you use this setup. Of course, the other advantage is that I need less minecart lines in the original design. I would have needed a minecart line here in the middle as well. No, I don't. So that's that. But the nastiest problem really was chicken jockeys. So Zigglins can spawn as chicken jockeys. And then something really weird happens. You see, this is just a very simple setup in a test world where I spawn Zicklins and they are picked up by the minecarts. And occasionally, without any reason, the minecarts will just stop when going around the curve. I have no idea why this happens and I submitted a bug report to Mojang about this. But this was really infuriating because at some point the farm would pick up a jockey and the jockey would typically get stuck here in one of these bends and all of the minecarts would back up. And the only way I found to deal with that is these lava columns here. Because the chicken jockeys will just go into lava and the lava will kill the chickens. And instead of a chicken jockey, we will have just baby zigglins. And these are not a problem. So chickens burn and our minecarts here are safe. Now. One problem that I haven't solved fully is that very occasionally this setup here will eat a hopper minecart. So the solution for that was to have a few of them uh, here in the barrels. So if the system sometimes uh, eats a minecart, it's not that bad. So we still have enough in the system. I'm not quite sure why this happens. The same happened to me with a mango's heater. So it doesn't seem to be tied to this heater specifically. So if you know a solution for that, let me know. But it's actually not too bad to just fill this barrel with maybe 27 hopper minecarts at the start of the farm. And then we have a few in the system here. So I think that's actually a pretty nice concept for a fortress farm. The gold rates aren't great, but enough to give you golden apples and powered rails. But the main benefit of course is to get blaze rods along with the usual wither skeleton drops in large quantities. If you want to build something like this, I suggest to find a soul sand valley with a large lava lake close to a fortress, like here. This is actually a pretty good spot. The lava lake will greatly diminish the risk of zombie reinforcements or Ziglin reinforcements. Of course, the AFK spot has to be in a soul sand valley. So around this spot, if you create a sphere with 128 blocks, all of this has to be completely in a soul sand valley, otherwise this method of spawn proofing with the striders will not work. You might be able to do something similar if you, if you have a warped forest, but act, I'm afraid I never tried. Maybe it works with a few more striders, I'm not sure, but the other biomes are completely off limits. Now this means you might have to search for a while to find a suitable spot for this farm, but I think it's worth it because 
The longer you search, the better the spot will be and the less work you have with spawn proofing. Well, I hope you liked the video. The world download does not contain a light medica because this farm is highly dependent on the layout of the fortress. So you will have to adapt it to the layout of the fortress in any case. But there is a world download that you can check out. The farm should work in Minecraft 1.19 and higher because it needs minecart eating. I checked it in 1.21, it works flawlessly there. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos and see you next time. Bye bye.